Hey, do you have an idea for a podcast but don't know where to start? Or do you have an already existing podcast that you want to take to the next level? Well, check out WeKnowPodcasting.com. From concept development to theme music to editing to logos, WeKnowPodcasting.com is a one-stop shop for all things pod. Don't hesitate to hit us up. We're very nice. Hello, and welcome to the End in Mind podcast. I'm your host, Caitlin, the owner of Meraki Media Management. The End in Mind is a place where we come to share stories, tips, and strategies of many entrepreneurs, creatives, business owners, and just some people that aren't willing to live the traditional lifestyle. We talk about how to live outside of the box today and how to incorporate what really is important in your life to keep that end goal always in mind. Again, if you would like to reach out to me in any type of way, you can find me on Instagram at Meraki underscore media underscore management. And I hope to hear from you all soon. Thanks so much and enjoy our show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the End of Mind podcast. I am here with a special guest who we have had on before. One of my favorite episodes so far in the End in Mind. Nicole is back. We are going to... Yay! Yay! <laughs> so happy that you're here. We are going to have so much fun. These topics are definitely things that I'm feeling currently. So most of the time, as you guys know, whatever I'm feeling, I normally end up talking about on the podcast. And I'm really excited to talk with Nicole today because she's going to give us some really great strategies around perfectionism, how to stop doing it all yourself. Like even this morning, I'm on my stories on my drive over and I'm like, I am feeling hectic. Like I just feel like I'm spread so thin, which is something that we touched on a little bit in our last episode with Nicole. But I think diving further into that and really getting back down to those beliefs She's so good at helping people with systems, automation, and getting that off of your mind. So super excited for this topic. And then we are going to talk a little bit about economy today too, like how to know what's going on in the world around us and how that's affecting our business directly. Most of the time as women and as men, like we all innately have this natural instinct of knowing, you know, just the environment or the vibe in the room. It can also be a mass amount of people across the world. I work with a lot of holistic practitioners that talk about these ideologies. And it's really interesting because once you can start to tap in and step back, it almost seems so clear what's happening in the world and how directly it may be impacting in your personal life. So this is something Nicole and I talk about all the time on our calls, which we figured we would Why not open up the conversation to you guys today? Yay! Thank you so much for having me back on. I'm so excited. I love doing this with you. Oh my gosh, I love it. Like, we're already, we have all these plans in the works, you know, so you guys have to stay tuned for some really exciting upcoming things from Nicole and I. Yes! So excited. But... Today, of course, we're going to dive right in. So thank you again, Nicole, for coming back on. I just love our conversations. Same. I think we vibe really, really well. And obviously, like being female business owners and having teams and also going through this like crazy journey towards the end of like a pandemic world. (laughs) Yeah. It used to be where like everyone can anticipate like, oh, it's Christmas time, like whether that means like spending time with family or like what that means for your business. And you're just like, oh, it it typically means like sales are high or low or people are taking more time off. And like now it's like, what is happening? I was talking to a friend last night who owns her own business and she was like, typically they're selling a lot more around this time. Mm -hmm. And like her and a few other colleagues aren't selling a lot online right now either. So It's just very interesting to see. Yeah. Like the trend is very different than what it used to be. It's so different. Like I feel like people right now, if they're not buying, you know, materialistic things, maybe they're investing in something like coaching or, you know, their mental health. And it's kind of pulling away from the consumer side, which 
obviously we all believe in so much, but then you feel for the consumer business owner because they have expectations. And exactly like what you said, like this post pandemic world is so weird. It's almost like the apocalypse, like in business. You know? <laughs> You're like, what is going on? I definitely remember the way that felt the beginning of the pandemic when it was like you had to be on a specific like essential business list to even like stay open like because the daycare is a physical space and right. so it was like oh my gosh we kind of were like holding our breath for like a couple weeks trying to figure out like is this considered essential <laughs> yes oh my gosh I remember when we were talking during that time it was just kind of like a waiting game you know? Yeah. You know, a lot of, you know, other like brick and mortar spaces either like just didn't make it yeah. or they just like, you know, if they were selling product that they made in house, like they just shut down the physical space and moved to online. Right. So it's very interesting, like being able to pivot, like have that mindset of being like, okay, like let's buckle up. Let's see what's going to happen. Let's yeah. see how we can make this work. Not a lot of businesses did that. No, they didn't. You're so right. Like this weekend, I was actually with my mom in New York and it was the first time I was in the city post pandemic. How was it? I haven't been to New York. It was wild. It was literally wild. Like we stayed right in Times Square and it looked like there was the same amount of cars that are like in Philadelphia oh my gosh. on a Monday morning, <laughs> you know, like I'm like, this is New York. Like you think of the big city, you think of the you know, energy. Yeah. Crowded places, Times Square. You There was like no traffic. You could get like anywhere pretty easily. I was like, this is oh, a little so scary. Creepy. Yeah. Because of course, when you go to New York, you're like, OK, it's going to take me 30 minutes to get uptown, like just realistically, yes. even if you're only five blocks away at times. And it was so different it was so so different all of the storefronts were closed down a lot of them in Times Square really sad too it feels you know it's depressing yeah you feel for the people there like you can see that they're struggling if they haven't already left the city maybe they're thinking about leaving eventually right you know a lot of people did leave we have a lot of well at the daycare we have a lot of pet parents coming that are coming from New York people are like yes. You know, it costs so much more to live in New York for a space that's just like a shoebox or like a closet. And then they're like, oh, you know what? I could just like go to Philadelphia, get something way more affordable, something bigger. Yeah. And either work remotely or, you know, we're seeing a lot of like people who are going back to school. Yeah. Moving in with family. Yeah, it's a crazy time. It's a crazy time. And like a lot of our listeners are in this transition as well, especially people like coming out of their mid 20s. Like it's really I feel like you're in this identity crisis. I was having this oh, conversation. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I could imagine I was talking to Greg, my significant other about this because he owns his own business for like over 10 years. Yes. And we were talking about like how there's going to be this like huge uptick in people trying to start their own business this year. Yeah. And I think, I think there was like a study that came out like this year is the year that like people signed up for EIN numbers, wow. like the most. So exciting. But we're yeah. like, so what does this mean? Right. You know? And we were kind of like breaking it down and being like, okay. And like you were saying that like, like people who are in their 20s just moving out and had to move back home because of the pandemic and are kind of like in this transition and they're like, okay, like I'm going to try to start my own thing. It's like really exciting because I feel like really cool things are created and invented by people who are like, okay, like I have this time. I have yeah. this dream and I'm going to do it. And then you have like the other side of the coin where it's kind of just like, okay, like I'm kind of, I, I'm stuck. <laughs> yes, right, right. <laughs> like I was supposed to be, and I feel like that's something we get stuck in is like, I was supposed to, yeah. and we all get stuck in that like old like reality of like, oh, like this was supposed to be my path. And it's like, yeah, yeah the shoulds, like the what shoulds. we were saying. Yeah, like yeah. I should be doing this. The journal exercise of like sitting down and like really asking yourself like what you want. It's really just like that simple of being like, 
what do I want? Because I remember, and I know you know this story, but like, and I think it was on the previous episode we did, but like, you know, having this daycare and this brick and mortar space and me like really realizing like, I did not want to have to be in there. Right. Like, I did not want to have to be there all day, every day. A lot of shame and guilt came from that, right. but it also let me put into action like, okay, like I can try and like weed myself out of this and see what happens without broadcasting to everyone. Like this is what I'm doing. Yes. Just so that there was no like external pressure of people like giving me their opinions. <laughs> right, right. Because we know they always come even if you're not asking. <laughs> They always will. And I feel like people who are in this transition stage, I feel like we all are. Yeah. Like all businesses are in tra- – Yes. <laughs> Business owners, we're always in some sort of transition or anticipating some sort of transition. But for the people who are just trying to start out, I feel like the holidays are such a big pressure because yeah. you have family that's just like super invasive of like asking personal questions of like, oh, so like – what are you doing? And how are you spending your time? And, you know, I'm just going to judge you because I have these old beliefs of what a typical job and a typical person of, you know, what success looks like. And, you know, of course, all of those other questions of like, oh, well, you'll meet someone and like, oh, like, even if you have met someone, people are always like, oh, so when are you going to have kids? Yes. Who gave these people permission to ask us these questions? Oh, my gosh. (laughs) So well said. Sean and I were just saying this, too. Like, I know, you know, it's not that we never want to have kids, but it's just something that's like so far down the line for us that it's not even like we're not even thinking about it, you know, like. Well, also, like, what is it any of these people's like this is like such an intimate thing that people feel like it's okay to start asking Like, I haven't seen you since last year, and you're just going to start asking me if I want children? (laughs) It really is funny when you think about it. It's like they think because they're your blood or like they're their lineage, you know, like they can just ask you whatever they want. And it is really uncomfortable when you don't have an answer. Like, sometimes I'll just say, I don't know, you know, like, and I just walk away, you know, like not trying to be rude, but I'm like, I really can't engage in the conversation because it's just not something that I want to think about right now you know no. well and I also don't like the added like judgment of well if she says she doesn't want kids yeah then it's like oh my gosh then everyone has to get involved and try to convince you that yes. this is, that their path is your path it's and so I feel true. like that goes hand in hand with like business as well it's like just because like your family did it one way doesn't mean that that is your way or the right yes. way. Yes. And it's like these, you know, mid to 20, like I would say even early 30s, these people that are coming out of this really tragic event, you know, like this will be something that will impact all of us for so many years to come. Like, We haven't even scratched the surface, you know, but coming out of that and already feeling this external pressure of where is my next step? What am I doing with my life? You know, like maybe they just got out of college and they're like, now I have this degree. Maybe it's something I hate. And I feel like I have to go into that line of work. If I don't, I'm going to get these awkward questions or even on LinkedIn, like social media is a whole nother, you know, added layer. I could go on and on about social media. Let's I talk mean, about it. You know how I'm, much we I'm, love I'm, it here. <laughs> I'm, people are going to be like turning the episode off. <laughs> I feel like, and I've talked to a few friends about this, like the main reason I hired you and Meraki is so that I don't have to go on yeah. Instagram. Like I don't want to have to go on. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame you. You can get sucked down that rabbit hole and lose like hours, hours of your time. Yeah. And I, you know, for me personally, and I know they've done studies on this, but you know, the more time I spend on Instagram, 
the worse I feel. Absolutely. It's hands down true. It's absolutely true. And what I always say like on the podcast and to my clients that if they come to me, like I've worked with some people in trainings where they don't have the money to outsource it and they feel you know, crippled, like every time they get on exactly like what you're saying, it's just this negative energy. I would definitely be very, very intentional and mindful of like who you're following. Yeah, absolutely. And like, don't think that other people will be offended if you just stop following them. Like people don't pay attention to that kind of stuff. Right. And if they (laughs) are, yeah. Yeah. Like then it's okay. Like maybe they're not meant for you, you know, to begin with. Yeah. Like if this isn't a person that you know, like physically that you've met physically, you can unfollow this person. Absolutely. And you know, it's really sad. Like even now I'll see some influencers, maybe they're in their mid twenties and they're losing followers. And it's just because people are coming up to an awakening. Like it's not because they don't like their content. Maybe they just don't want to hear about, you know, losing weight or things like this. The theme of transition, people are transitioning like what content they want to be consuming. Absolutely. And I'm going to throw this out there. And again, people are probably going to hate this. But like <laughs> losing followers is kind of like a great thing. Yes. Because then you're weeding out the people who are not your people. Literally knocks to that. <laughs> I love this. This is everything that we believe at Meraki. Like if I have a client that we onboard, maybe they have X amount of, you know, 3000 followers, we'll say. Sometimes they will lose 200 followers in that first month. And sometimes they're panicked and I come to them and I'm saying, no, those are not your clients. Thank God they're gone. You know, let them go. Let them find the person that they want to go work with because it's not you. And instead of you wasting your time trying to convert them into clients, focus on the people that want to work with you, that understand your approach. Like I am all about the niche audience. That's why same. Even when, you know, when we launch like a giveaway or something, it's like, it's okay if we don't gain thousands of followers from it. You know, that's not the goal of the giveaway. Right. Well, and I think people need to understand again, like what do they, what's the intention of this Instagram account? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, what do, what do 10,000 followers mean? Right. If only a thousand are really engaging with you. Yes. And that's normally how these big accounts are. Like, unless you see a celebrity like Kim K, even then, you know, like she has all of these people in her 200 million people. Yeah. She also (laughs) has like a team like this. She's not running things by herself. She's a very smart person. She's very, very smart. And she does not do anything alone. At, at all. You know, everything's edited. Everything's sent to somebody before it's posted on her Instagram. It's just how it works. And like, I think getting down to the nitty gritty of what your goals are, especially as you're heading into this new year, post holidays with your family, that stress is over. Think about sitting down and really writing these goals. Like this is definitely something that you guys can go to Nicole's Instagram account for. She's going to be sharing tons of information about starting a business in the new year and like her membership program that's going to be filled with like-minded individuals that are in your same position. And I remember when I was first starting, that's all I wanted. Like finding other people that were feeling the same pressure. Like, like I said, post holidays, maybe even before the holidays, sitting down, getting down your goals so that you can go to other people and say like, how did you make this happen? This is my goal. You know, it's so great. I mean, the membership is really just so that you don't feel alone. I feel like entrepreneurship and especially like we're working from home now. Yeah. And like all we, all we have are like, we're left alone with ourselves and our own thoughts and I'm just like oh my gosh like I can't listen to myself anymore I'm gonna go (laughs) crazy like I need somebody else's like input (laughs) yes yeah I feel the same way and it's like even as small as somebody saying to you like I've uh, you're normal like I'm having these same types of you know repeated thoughts or I've been having the same thing like my perfectionism 
has come out so much over the past few months and I'm having a really hard time like silencing that voice in my head and giving Mm. myself some grace you know like it's like I want to be at this mark now but I can't get there without coaching you know like it's just the truth. I, I hear that I feel like perfectionism and it's so funny because I feel like once we hit that like need for control yeah. What what we do is we add more to our plate yes. instead of like, you know, like stepping away or like weeding things out. So then it just gets worse. <laughs> right. And then you're drowning like me currently. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> You know, and like, I just want to say to the listeners, like, I want you guys to hear this because even three years into business, these same patterns come up, you know, like these same things, unless you deal with them and you understand your patterns, it's going to continue to happen, you know? Yes. Yeah. It's happening to me right now. (laughs) I mean, it's great that you mentioned that because even like with Club Fetch, like we're really good at this point, like we know our clients behavior so well yeah. so we prepare in advance and you know people are always shocked like that we're closed for the holidays and we're like listen like we've been mentioning this for like months now <laughs> it's everywhere it's all over social media it's in your email for the past yeah, three like, weeks you know <laughs> and like this is it like so i think setting like clear boundaries but also like anticipating Like, so we reach out to people in advance, not for their benefit, but for our benefit. Yes. Oh, I love this. (laughs) Yeah. Like I am a huge advocate for drama prevention. Yes. 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 (laughs) Zero drama. We're zero drama club. Zero drama. Like I don't want to hear it. (laughs) Right. Right. And like, I think that that's such a good point because then when they do get upset, they'll just come back to you and you're like, listen, here it all is in writing. Right. Listen, like we've sent this to you, you signed this or like you, you know that it's Christmas, we're not going to reopen on Christmas. I'm just using that as like an example. Right. But, you know, I also think it's important to set boundaries around what your goal, like your mission is as a company, because we have, you know, people that are coming in from out of town. Yeah. Yeah that just like want to leave their dog at the daycare for like a day or two. And we're like, no, we don't do that. Right. We're not taking your dog overnight, you know. Well, not just overnight, but just like this is like a community-based member, like doggy daycare. Like if you don't live here. Right. Or if you're not a consistent member, you can't come. Like we're just not that type of daycare. Right. I love that. I'm all about like – nurturing the current clients that you have. Yeah. And I mean, you know, as well as all of our listeners know who have ever like brought on a client, onboarding a client takes so much time and energy. Yes. Yes, it does. It's like for for us to spend all that time and energy on a dog that's coming for like eight hours for one day is just like not worth it for us. But I completely agree with having the membership. It's also important like the quality of the service that you guys are doing. It's like really a luxury daycare. And that's what I want our listeners to understand is Nicole is in the city of Philadelphia. It's a very nice area. A lot of the clients that she works with come from very, you know, high-end backgrounds. A lot of them are in the medical field and they're just, you know, very professional. They're professionals. And I think absolutely they also appreciate the level of professionalism that you meet them at. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's very interesting. You know, the physical space was great. People just walk by with their dogs and they're interested. And then it got to a point where it was like, okay, we're bringing in clients who are not a great fit. Yeah. And what I wanted to bring up is like, listen to your intuition. Yes. Yes. Like, I so many times, like even to this day, I'm like, uh, it still might work out. Like, I don't know. Like, let's give them a chance. And like a week or two later, you're like, okay, it didn't work out. You knew this. Like you didn't. <laughs> well said. Oh my gosh. Well said. It's so true. We, we want to say yes to so many people. Yeah. That, you know, we kind of like 
push down that voice that's like, but yeah, there's this like a couple red flags and you're like, no, 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 it's okay. Like, yes, it's so funny. Like we've never had a situation where it was like a great pet parent and a bad dog situation. It's always like pet parent like dog or dog like pet parent. Yeah, that's so It's so funny. That's so funny. And I'm sure people with children – it's like the same thing. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, that's literally cracking me up. I always think of 101 Dalmatians like in the beginning when all the dogs look like their owners and it's literally yes. you know? <laughs> Even looking at Bailey, like I'm like she's like a mutt mix but she's, she's kind of so petite, cute. you know? Like she's just like fits our personalities so well. It's really funny and it's so funny as well like even just how you interact with your dogs like they pick up on your energy so much like if I'm having a yes. low day you know like she's having a low day like it's so Aww, weird it's so true well and I think this is a great segue into like the people that we hire yes. because you know that's something that we put that comes into play when you have a team that's dealing with animals or other people yes And so we only hire a specific type of person. And how do you you do – can you, like, tell us a little bit more about that? Like, what does that mean, you know? And how did you kind of come up with that avatar? Because it's almost like a second ideal client, you know, for some of our listeners that don't have, you know, employees. It's the same. Like, if you don't have the right team, you're going to be losing clients. You know, it's like this tug of war between, like, clients and team because – you know, once you, once you're scaling, you don't want to start taking on other roles yes. when your main role. Well, so for me specifically, like my role is to find clients, which is really marketing. Right, right. And so that's when we had like we redid our entire brand. We got a new website, and you know that really differentiated us from all of these other daycares yeah absolutely it like really Um, stands out and for you guys that haven't checked out Nicole's club fetch Philly it's at club fetch Philly and her Instagram is so beautiful and all the branding is wonderful go check out her website if you need some inspiration really really well done clean concise you know it's just such a great vibe I definitely want you guys to check that out thank you I love it so much and you know so once I figured out like okay I'm stepping away from being an employee. Yes, right. <laughs> At the daycare, I was like, my role is really to find clients. How do we find clients? Is marketing. Yes. It really did help. I mean, because it sets the expectation right. of the type of client you're getting. Yes, absolutely. And it also sets the expectation of the type of people who are going to start applying for a job with you as well. Yeah, it's like a double whammy. It is. Yeah. So, you know, we also have great systems in place where, you know, both like client and like candidate have to fill out applications. And Mm. it's really about asking the right questions. Yes. And, you know, for someone to work at the daycare, we kind of ask the same question repetitively, but in different ways. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize that until now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having the I'm having it right now. Yeah. The clear moment. Absolutely. But you know, we also want to make sure like um speaking to clients is a really big deal, like client communication. Yeah. So in the application, we kind of put in there, like, have you worked in sales? Mm, and we put in, like, multiple choice. Like, have you worked, you know, we put, like, restaurant industry because right. our play coordinators are on their feet, like, all day. Yeah. Oh, cool. of course. So, you like, know. we want to yeah. know, like, you know, we also ask for their resume beforehand, you know, to att- for them to attach their resume. But, it, you know, we want to know to what extent do you – have like pet care experience and sometimes it's just like minimal pet care experience but they're really good with like client communication and they're really good with being on their feet 
Mm-hmm. And that's like a that's that works out really well. Yeah, that's amazing because they've already yeah. kind of like had that experience in their background. So they know, you know, clients always write, especially like in certain situations with a membership. It's like they're not just going home from the restaurant. Like you're going to see them, you know, a lot more. <laughs> again. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, we also are like we're over communicators. Like transparency is one of our core values. Love at Club Fetch. So we have an app where we send out pup dates yes. to each each pet parent with just like, I think it's like four times a day where they get an update of like what's going on. You know, they also get walked, like the dogs get walked. And then, you yeah. know, we upload like a bunch of really cute pictures so that they can actually see. Because like that's the thing, like you know what Bailey looks like when she's not having a good time and you know what Bailey looks like when she's having a great time. Yes, it's written all over her face. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and it's really awesome because our pet parents can message us back like right away. It's like private yeah. instant messaging between like us and the pet parents and instead of them like no offense to any daycare that has like the live camera. But like, that's not, you know, I, cause a lot of people have asked like, oh, do you have a live camera? And I'm like, absolutely not. Right. Like, no. It also helps too. Cause like all of our play coordinators are creating these pup dates and reaching out to our pet parents. So you get to know the people that are working at the daycare. Right. Right. And who's interacting with your dog, which as you know, right. a dog owner, that's very, very important. Yes. Instead of it being this like, oh, well, I don't know who, you know, my dog's out with today. It's we call ourselves like a private doggy daycare yeah, because we only allow in like a spe- like a small amount of members. Right, right. And that's she also means that like on a daily basis. So on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. her members have to book out through the app. And I think that that's really important for us to hear as listeners, you know, like, why do you have that approach? And can we kind of explain what that means to a pet parent when they're coming in? They might have some kickback originally, but then they start to realize that it's going to benefit them in the long run. Can you explain that for us a little bit more? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So from a pet parent perspective, like we're, and again, like transparency is like yeah. our thing. Like we love it. We want to be upfront about like, this is this is our world and this yeah. is what you, you know and we basically give them like before they even book like to, an assessment to come in to see the daycare you know we give them like it's called like our club fetch member rules like yes. we send them a document of like our rules and you know their dogs so it's like you know some behavioral rules also like how to use the app Yes. And like our policy on like cancellations and stuff like that. And, you know, we're, we're really flexible because I, you know, we also understand that other daycares have like a weird like pickup drop off time. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Like some, like, I don't, I don't know why, but we don't do that. Like if you're booking a full day, we're open from seven to seven. Like you come at any time, you can pick up your dog at any time before, you know, before seven. Yeah. Like, that's great. There is no stipulation on pickup, like a specific drop off pickup window. And then we also have like a, like a half day, which is like five hours of play. And again, like they can come any between like any five hour window they yeah, want that's great that's so Which much is, easier it's so much easier like you don't want to like people's lo- like you want to make it easy for people yeah absolutely you know it, the barrier to entry is already like you're already making these clients like jump through hoops yes <laughs> yes to make sure that they're the right fit and so like once they're in it like you don't want to make it too difficult for them yes because then they are the client you know it's a service-based business and I think that that part is really important that she's stressing like for our listeners kind of understand like once they're in that's when it's like okay we are the service we're you know providing here you're amazing we love you like we're gonna take the best care of your animal like it doesn't 
stop, like it just gets better. Yes, I love that. I love that. And I guess it's because of all of my years as a dog walker and having a team of dog walkers and also like seeing the size of our space and having dogs myself is that, you know, animals need a lot of TLC. They need a lot of attention and, you know, they're wonderful, but too many of them, it could be like, (laughs) yeah. I mean, listen, I worked at the daycare for a couple of years I also opened it like for the first three months, it was just me, myself and I from seven to seven, open to close. And so when you have that personal experience, you can be like, okay, 10 dogs by myself is too much. (laughs) Working eight hours straight is too much. So we put into place where, you know, um, mental health Mm. is very important. Yeah for our team and so no like all of our shifts are five to six hours I love that that's great yeah it's just a lot I mean like anyone who is like a preschool teacher or like a camp counselor I mean you can relate you know these dogs are kind of like kids oh yeah they're exactly like kids all they want to do is play and have fun and I mean all they do is like play eat and nap yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and funny. not everyone gets along. And yeah. so sometimes, you know, someone needs a timeout and like, you know, and the best part is like when you don't have as many dogs per day, you can really get to know like what each dog is going through. Yeah. Some dogs might be coming out of like getting surgery. Other dogs might be on medication. Some dogs might have had like a traumatic experience the weekend before. And so we can spend more attention on, on that rather than just like throwing in like 40 dogs in like a space and just kind of being like, okay. (laughs) Right. Good luck. You know, like that literally is like good luck. And, you know, I think it's also because Nicole had this experience, which we do talk about a lot on her Instagram page as well. And it comes down to her seeing other people and her competitors and how they handle things and what she liked and what she didn't like. You know, like I think that that's the huge hitter home for you. You know, what's so funny is that like I – (laughs) <laughs> well, I didn't know what the, what I was doing when yeah. I opened the daycare. I'm like, I've never done this before. Yeah, I've walked dogs, but I've never actually run like a physical business. Right, yeah. It was kind of just like listening to pet parent feedback. Mm, that's interesting. Because we would be, we, you know, one of our barriers to entry to become a member is that, you know, we have to do a behavior assessment. They're animals. We have to do it. Like, there's just no way. And yeah. thankfully, dogs are very transparent. Like, if they like other dogs, you can see it immediately. If they don't, you can see it immediately. But, you know, we invite the dog and the pet parents into the facility so that they can see it. Yeah. And to be honest, like, people were telling me, like, you know, they were shopping around, which they were honest about. And they always said, like, we weren't even allowed to see the space. I do not like that at all. Right. Well, yeah. and you know, it's market research is super important. Yeah. I mean, we even had like a business plan drawn up before we opened the daycare. Right. And that's key. Like, I want to explain this really quick for the listeners too. Like, and then I'll let you dive back in. I think that listening to what Nicole is saying, if you are just getting started, you need to have a plan in place even if you don't know what you're doing, like she's literally sitting here telling us, I feel the same way when I started Meraki. You're shooting in the dark, but you have a mission. And when you get this feedback, you have to take note of it and somehow produce a product, you know, like out of your market research or add that to your mission statement so you can come back to it later. You know, like this is really good stuff. I hope you guys are taking notes. Yeah, I mean, a business plan, changed everything just because 
again, it was a physical space. So yeah. it's like, okay, we have expenses like right, right off the bat. Right. Which is really not that different from having an online business too. I mean, a lot of people who are starting a business online don't realize like, no, 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 they're a lot more expensive than expenses than you actually think. Yes. Like your PayPal expenses are enough to put you under at times, you know, like they yeah. take a significant amount. Yeah. 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 I mean, even at the daycare, I was like, okay, like, cause we use Stripe and yeah. I'm like, all right, like I have to, you know, realize that they're taking a percentage. Exactly. Yeah. And factor that in. Factor that in. I mean, also like legal documentation. Like, yeah. Filing at your LLC, even if you're le- like using legal Zoom, which is kind of like super simple, it's like that's still an expense. Yes, your website hosting. At one point, you're going to be putting out a lot more yeah. than you're bringing in, and it can be scary, especially if like you're living at home and your parents are like, "What the hell are you doing?" <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, story of my life. You know, literally, my mom's like, "Why are you paying people to work for you when you're still living at home?" And I was like because I can't scale without it you know it's it's a mindset that you have to get into yes yeah it's hard for sure if you're that type of person who's in that situation you know I would definitely look into getting a coach or a mentor just so that you have that support yeah yeah and guidance when you don't have people in your corner that understand like what you're striving for because that can change everything it really does it affects your every day you know when you're getting up every morning and someone's questioning you that's really hard to stay motivated you know yeah especially when you're living in your parents house or like a family member's house or like sleeping on your friend's couch and people are kind of like uh so when are you uh (laughs) yeah they're like uh are you buying a starbucks today or what you know like yeah yeah it gets real really quick and money is an uncomfortable conversation for most people if you're an entrepreneur money cannot be uncomfortable you have to be able to openly talk about it you know oh my gosh yeah i mean i remember being a dog walker and like people were like okay so how much and i would be like clamming up and i'm like yes. nicole like this is 20 dollars. like come <laughs> right. on <laughs> right they're like my lunch costs more than that you know like right yeah, yeah. and i mean we could talk about the economy too yeah let's we're kind talking of about roll pricing. in definitely let's kind of roll into that and i think you know this is super important for us to discuss because It obviously has to do with conversations around money, but also understanding how you can gauge what your clients can afford, especially when you're pivoting, because the world changes very quickly. And sometimes (laughs) your pricing doesn't always match up with the client that you're attracting. And that's something that you definitely need to look at. This was huge for Nicole and I actually during the pandemic when I was working with her heavily on coaching, which I still work with her and I'm so thankful for that. But for being able, you know, (laughs) to like explain to me like the people that I was attracting with my pricing was hindering my growth to some extent. And also my time management. Like it's all really important and it all affects one another yeah money and boundaries are like can't go hand in hand like Mm. even at the daycare we were like you know we again like we did our market research we had our business plan we saw what other daycares were charging and I was like we're not doing this (laughs) yeah yeah oh my god we're gonna charge more because we're not allowing as many dogs as these people right are doing so we're going to charge a little bit more because we believe in quality over quantity yes and we also want to keep these clients as reoccurring clients not just like a one and done situation right right absolutely and you know i i heard this before and it's very it, it really rings true like you know this exercise i did where they say like you know if your business was another company like a a brand like what brand would it be oh that's interesting I like that yeah where it's like oh like would you be considered like Apple would you be considered like Walmart where like Mm. all of these other daycares were considered like Walmart where it's just like everybody comes right in masses and it's like or or do you want to seem more like a boutique type of company where you know 
it's very like niche down and you only provide client, you know, service a certain type of client. So I feel like that's a really great exercise in figuring out like what your business looks like to you know, your clients, like what type of brand are you? Yes, I love that question. And I think that that's definitely something like, let's say if you're not in the service-based business, even though most of you listeners are, and maybe you're more in the product-based business, that may be kind of hard to wrap your head around because you're like, I want everybody to come to me like a Walmart, you know, but what it depends on is the product and the pricing level that you have as well. Is your marketing reflecting that? Like, how is it really showing your client what's going to come in the mail when they purchase from you? What's that experience? Oh my gosh, packaging. Packaging is like a whole new thing now. It's crazy. I mean, crazy. It's so crazy, but I have to tell you, like when I buy something and the packaging is like super beautiful, I'm like, oh, this makes me feel like I definitely made the right choice. And that's yes. exactly what you want people to feel when when they purchase your product. Absolutely. Or like at that time when they're experiencing it for the first time. Yes. They want to so feel true. validated. Right. Like, and especially because online shopping, obviously now we've all become a little bit more comfortable with it, but they said, you know, before the pandemic that you would have a lot of guilt around online shopping because it's not like an instant gratification that we were used to having. Like when you go to the mall and you have all the bags and you get to come home and you're like, that was (laughs) worth it. You know, like that kind of thing, you know? True. Yeah, that's very true. It does have a different effect because you see the money taken out right away, then you're waiting for it, you know? So if you show up with it maybe a week or two later and the packaging is all beautiful, exactly like what you said, that's instant gratification in itself. Instant gratification. Yeah, you're right because you're thinking like, oh gosh, like I paid all sorts of money for this thing yeah, and I'm not going to have it for like a week. Yes. And then you get it and you're like, oh, I forgot I even purchased this. Like that was a nice surprise. You know, I've already right. paid off my credit card this month. Like that was great, you know? And then you go back the next month, you get it again. I think that that's so important for us to touch on too. And like with the economy, where businesses are right now, they've had to cut back maybe during COVID. But it's important to remember that now maybe if your income level is coming back up, don't be afraid to push it back into the business and help yourself traject forward. You oh know? my gosh, I cannot express that enough is like investing in yourself and investing back in your business is so important because yeah. your clients will see that. Yeah. Like we spend a good amount of money on branding like and rebranding the daycare and our clients took notice and they were like, damn, yeah. like I made a good decision like being a member here, like look at how cool this looks. Like I can like share this like on Instagram yes. and you know, like people love that stuff, especially supporting like a local business that they go to often yeah. and knowing that not everyone can get in. Exactly. It's like feels like this elevated experience. It is an elevated ex- experience. It but is an elevated experience. Yes. Yeah. Like even online, it's like I'm in this special club kind of thing, like me and my dog, you know, like it's like yeah. that feeling. And that's what you want your clients to feel when they work with you, you know, um, thankful to be a part of the business and happy to support you know someone like Nicole especially like she's such a good person and as she's even built out the bliss out boss a lot of her clients from club fetch has said like you know yes <laughs> this is so cool like how can I learn you know like more about this and your story and like learn from you it's really interesting I know I'm like still trying to like <laughs> <laughs> wrap my head around like you know having like little like people actually like paying attention to like what you're doing because I feel like I'm so used to just like burying my head in the sand like yeah. doing the work yeah and then like people are like wait tell me more and I'm like wait it's not done <laughs> you're right. You're right she's like I'm not ready yet I'm just trying to I'm tease you <laughs> I felt like I was the daycare for such a long time. That's like a totally separate scenario than like when you have a personal brand. Yeah. I mean, you know more than anyone 
about it's, personal branding. Since it's that's wild. What you do. Yeah. <laughs> like it's actually crazy. Like I remember like when I first realized like I had to put my face out there. Like when I first, if you guys scroll back like all the way, like back three years on my Instagram, you'll see like I was not putting out my face. Like that was not something. Or if I was, it was like Sean and I in the photo, you know, like I'm like, yeah, I same. can't be it's alone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like just so different and I'm like how can I like not put my face in this post like still offer value and it was not working like it was just not gonna work I had to be in it on the page daily even my clients now you know they'll come to me and they're nervous and I completely understand their nerves you I'm know I'm still like, that person <laughs> yeah I'm at times me too you know like you get into imposter syndrome and you're like what am I even talking about today? Like, who am I today? You know, like it's yes. like, it's hard to always be on. It definitely is. It's it's like a personal growth moment when you force yourself to do it and then it ends up coming back tenfold, you know, like in the future. Well, I was advised by a mentor at the time of me stepping away from Club Fetch and like wanting to start this new business, the Blissed Out Boss. Yeah and start coaching and helping other women, you know, with their business struggles. And, you know, my mentor at the time was like, okay, well, you need to book a photo shoot. And I was like, oh, dun, dun, dun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, who am I Always, to be right? like scheduling a photo shoot? Like, who's gonna even care? Like, people are gonna think I'm so full of myself, but she was absolutely right. Absolutely. So it is, it's marketing. It really is. That's exactly what it is. You know, like rebranding the daycare is the same thing as getting like photo shoots done for your personal brand if you're your business. Right. At first you're like, you know, I'm going to spend this money. Like it feels like you're spending it on yourself and it's not, it's completely for the business, you know, like. It is. Yeah. Yeah. People want to, and you know, and I was having a hard time. I'm like, people don't care, but people want to feel like they're having that elevated experience or like whatever your brand is, like you're attracting the people that, yeah. you, you know, that should be the right fit for you. So when you're doing marketing and you're doing photo shoots and your branding colors and all of that, that should go into, you know, thought of like, oh, yeah, this is exactly what I'm offering. Yeah, that's really it. And it should match your personality. Yes, your personal brand has to definitely match your personality. That's all what it is about showing up authentic online, you know, like – what are your favorite colors? What? How do they interact with people? How do they make people feel? You know, like when I was first doing black and white, one of my best friends, she's like a graphic designer. She's like, I like this. Like, she's like, I like this, but I don't know how everyone else is right. going to feel about like the no color vibe. Right. You know? When we were doing my website, like NicoleRaquina.com, our web designer and our brand director was like, how do you want pe- how do you want to make people feel? Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, this is so good." Yes. That's the best question. Even when I'm writing like content for my clients, that's what I ask myself. Like, how does my client want to make their client feel in that moment, you know, right. as they're reading it? Yeah. Right. And it's also playing into like how you come off in person too, because, the so br- you know, the brand director was like, you're su- super approachable. So we're not going to have this like neon yellow. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like flashy or something, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I wanted something like soft, approachable, you know, business can be so stressful. Yes. Oh my God. And I didn't want to attract someone who wanted that like hard masculine, like just tell me the answer yeah. type of situation. It's like, it's, a, it's much deeper than that. It's oh a much God. deeper conversation when you're running your own business. Right. And you are making these decisions. Like it's about you. It's really about you. And that's what I think a lot of people, you know, as we were kind of talking about earlier in the episode, like starting your business, you think that you're going to hire a coach. You think you're going to get a book and you 
actually believe like you're gonna find a hidden answer like amongst you know all of this <laughs> crap that's out there because there is a lot of crap and that's why I want you guys to be careful if you are starting a business make sure you do your research on the coach before you get involved yeah you get know. to know the person yeah reach out ask them questions that you that are really important to you. Yes. If they don't have an application process, that might not, that's probably a red flag. That is so well said. You know, if you work with someone that really knows what they're doing, they have to limit the amount of people that they take on. You know, it's just the way it is. Like Meraki's hitting that limit with our management. We know that we're going to hit it in 2022. That's so exciting. It's really exciting. You know, it's great. And I'm like, awesome. Do I, I have to now decide because that's like business. If I want to continue to expand that part of the business or if I want to continue back into courses and training and you know it's all about being flexible and like going with the flow and heading into 2022 with an open mind and figuring that out along the way you know and managing out that time like creating a course takes a lot more time than you think it does and I have one currently it needs to be updated it needs to be refreshed you know and like I'm working with a coach right now and I love his approach two courses like he just includes all of his courses in his membership like if you pay like for a monthly membership with him you get a call weekly it's really valuable he's really knows his stuff he's like an Instagram coach but he actually coaches other people like how to run other people's giveaways and things like that it's really interesting and I like that he gives you every course that he's ever made you know like it's like even at the beginning of when Instagram used to be different, he includes that in there because it's important for you as the consumer to know how it's evolved, yes. you know, so you can start to see the evolution as it's coming out. Like social media is changing every day. Now I can start to predict what's happening, you know, just from working in it for three years too. It's like natural, but including those past courses it's like I still have to update them I still have to refresh like what you're saying it takes time and finding that time finding the right people to maybe support me if that's what I need like it's a lot of different thought processes but hopefully you guys can start to see what that looks like as I'm kind of talking through it like this is literally like live like I'm like sharing with you all (laughs) what I'm going through right now like it's a lot to take in yeah a hundred percent I mean I think it's also great when people have access to like where you started I always compare like starting your own business to like being in like middle school you're just like this awkward the most awkward stage in your life. (laughs) So (laughs) awkward. It's so awkward. It's terrible. And you know that you're being awkward, but literally- And you're like, how do I stop this? And that just makes it worse. (laughs) It makes it so much worse. You're like literally recording the video 10 times to try and get it right, you know? Oh my God. Like having a piece of paper up like on your computer trying to like read off and it's like- (laughs) it's so bad it really is bad and that's why why we're sharing it with you guys like this is what it feels like it's very uncomfortable and it's It's so uncomfortable and it's like just like anything practice yeah that's what I think you're not gonna it's never gonna be perfect I mean there's always gonna be changes and I feel like you have to be okay with that. Yes. Even with prices. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm sure your prices have totally changed. Oh my gosh, immensely. Evolving is part of it. You're yeah. never like, just because you're underselling right now doesn't mean that you can't increase your prices later. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's why you guys started a business, you know, like, That's why you're doing it. So you don't have to go to your boss and ask for, you know, like approval or something. Right. That's why you're doing it. For anyone who's thinking about increasing their prices and said like, hey, like I've had some experience. People are like have are raving about this service and you're kind of like limiting yourself in increasing your price and you think that you really want to increase it. You should increase it. Yeah. I always believe in you know, testing it out, a a new client that doesn't, you know, doesn't know your new pricing, Yeah. you know, message, you know, emailing, however you sell to someone, whether it's over the phone or whatever, and just say like, this is my new price scale. 
da 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 like don't even hesitate people yeah. will feel that energy like you have to believe it yourself yeah absolutely i mean even if you're like you know practice the speech you have yes <laughs> yeah or like write it out a bunch of times you know don't come off like too too confident but just make it seem like this is normal right act as if it is right right even though it doesn't and, feel like and that see what happens yeah yeah and you then you really do have to see what happens because sometimes they're like oh you know I could never afford that and if it's somebody that you really want to work with then you can say you know well why don't we try and make something work why don't you tell me what your budget is and maybe I can put together a proposal well, you know not even that like I think it should really be like this is the price and if it doesn't work, we can create like a payment plan. Yeah. Always offer a payment plan first. That's a good point. Yeah. You also have to realize like you might be outgrowing where you were. Yeah. That's a really good point. And if you're attracting the same clients that you were bringing on at a certain rate, like at a smaller rate, and those are the people you're attracting, yeah, they're probably going to freak out. Right. Over the price. Right. But... You know, I also think that don't give up. If like you lose that person, it's okay. <laughs> Someone else is coming. Absolutely. Someone else is coming who is going to pay that rate. Yes. And they're probably a lot better fit. And I feel like that's why I say, you know, just out of experience, like I've worked with some really great, amazing clients that maybe they can't choose like our highest package, but maybe they pick the next package. And that's what Nicole and I worked on was having a few options. Yes. So even if you pitch them the highest price, then make sure that you let them know, OK, we do offer, you know, this range of pricing so that we can find something that works for you if they're right. your ideal client you know that you're leveling up with that you really care about right but there yeah. is like a nurture sequence that yeah. goes into it and when you were thinking of increasing your prices it was like okay well how do we nurture this into like a kind of like an easy step where people are like oh okay I can still afford such and such package yeah. but I won't be getting the added value of whatever the additional like, right. lead generation or, yeah, you know. And I feel like that's really, really good because, yeah, it takes more. And people are going to understand, yes, that takes up a lot more time. Yes. And it should be an additional fee. Exactly. Like with, you know, the video content creation, that's what I always say, like on the sales calls, you know, I'll explain like our lowest package, you might not get a reel created for you, but you are getting lead gen, you are getting three days a week of like really great infographics, really great images that you share with us, that whole thing. But then at your highest level package, you get a reel created for you once a week. We're creating video content for you. As long as you share, you know, the video because we have to have something to work with. But, right. you know, <laughs> like people are like, oh, you can just create us videos. I'm like, that's not really how it works. Like we need some content right. to edit down, you know, and like curate to make it beautiful. So there's Which a lot I of different. Like is kind of like a really great barrier to entry for people who are really afraid to put themselves out there on video. Yeah. because it you're gonna you're gonna see it first like you're handing it over to a professional right right who is gonna try to make it work even if it's like not great yes <laughs> absolutely like and you know so that might actually help people who are like oh my god like reels are a really big thing now I really think this would be great for my business because video is always you know, more eye-catching. Right. Right now it totally is. It's exciting. Yeah. When you pick, like, create a brand that's yourself, you're always marketing anyway because it's super authentic to right. who you are. Yeah, absolutely. It's your personal identity. Yeah. And then I feel like, you know, you can always, whenever, like, you're personally, like, going through something and personally transitioning – you book a whole new photo shoot. You rebrand. Yeah. Like, I feel like people who don't know how to like scale or pivot, it's just like, just allow yourself the permission to change. Like yes. you're allowed to change. Yeah. I love that. That's And you're allowed great. to change your mind. We're, we are literally looking at moving to Colorado part-time. Yay. 
And I know I'm like so excited. I'm so excited. And so we've been kind of like house hunting a little bit, Yes, but it's, you know, and I feel like it's obviously adding like a lot more like pressure and stress, but it's supposed to be like something fun, but it's also trying to figure out like, okay, like what do we want? Yeah. That's always the question, right? Yeah. Like you can, and it goes to everything. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Even your perfectionism, like that's a great indication of like, oh shit, I'm not doing what I want. I'm not getting yes. what I want. What is that? And starting and so. from there and being like, okay, I need to hire someone and this old job description isn't cutting it. I need to go back and I need to revamp it. Yeah. That old job description is not set in stone. Everything right. in life can change like you can change anything at any time it's really exciting and you know society tells us that we can especially as women like especially you know as you're in this younger years of your life you feel like you're just creating this identity post-pandemic you know it's like a lot well, going that, on it's that stuff that old thought of like either or you can have yeah. this or that it's you know and I feel like we're coming into a generation and like a new theme of like and like I can have this and, and that. that yeah we can I love live it. in Philadelphia and Colorado right why not and it doesn't make a difference besides us being happier <laughs> yeah it's like that's the answer right there you know like you don't need to be miserable at all and it's something so small you know it's like just booking maybe like an overnight in Atlantic City or something like small right. you know it doesn't have to be crazy or an Airbnb or, somewhere I mean something even smaller and especially with working from home like mm -hmm. you lose it you know like you're like work mode work mode work mode I'm on a call he's on a call you know lunch is being missed because we have lunch calls and then you know it's five o'clock like it's like wild you're like you turn around the day is over like it's so weird how these small things can yep. shift everything you know like well, immensely I also feel like as human beings like we just get bored easily. Yeah. And so like anything, like we love somewhat of like a little bit of a challenge. Yeah, totally. It's that, you know, if you've been in a relationship for, you know, a couple of years and yeah. things kind of just like, like the dust has settled. And right. like, now we're kind of like just two people living together, living our own lives. It's real. <laughs> it's real. It hits you across the face. You're like, damn, like I thought this was going to be like exciting kind of, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, like when it's not like when you were dating and you were like oh my god does he like me oh my god right. like where are we gonna go on this date and it's like <laughs> you know <laughs> now I'm picking up your dirty <laughs> underwear in the morning <laughs> you know like <laughs> seriously <laughs> <laughs> we love our men. We're just joking. But yeah, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, but everyone can relate. <laughs> right? Even if, you ha even if you're living with like siblings or like, yeah. just, you know. Even you know, like mom and dad. Anyone. Yeah, like mom yeah. and dad, you anyone. know. Yeah, like it really does impact your relationship. But I love how you said like making time for the people that you love because that's why we start a business, you know. Yeah, like most I of mean, the time. We're, go we're having like our first date night. Love it. For since like forever, because we have Pepper who's eight months old and she has like a little bit of separation anxiety. Yeah, and so like we booked in advance to have a sitter come tonight. Yay. Just so we can like go out to dinner. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's like those little things, it's like acts of kindness that's yeah. like not just good for like you, but it's good for the whole of you, like as the relationship, as a family. Yeah. You know, and it's the same thing in business with a team. I would even say to my team members, like sometimes I'll just hop on and I'm like, thank you so much for like putting forth the effort to do X, Y, Z thing. Like I appreciate you. Like I'll type it out, you know. I want them to know how much I care about them and the time yes. that they're offering, you know. It's yes. like so thank important. A thank you goes a long way. Huge, huge. I also just wanted to add to like a couple friend of ours, what they – do to help like their communication is they create like uh events like so greg and i have our own like calendar oh that's cute yeah 
And it took like two years to get him to actually like, do it. <laughs> that would be Sean. <laughs> yeah. But we're doing it now because I would be like, because he'll tell me something, be like, oh, did I tell you I'm doing such and such and such? Da, da, da. And I'll be like, is it on the calendar? Yes. Is it, is it on the calendar? So now it's like on the calendar. And I think it's like also trying to figure out like what's calendar worthy yes. for each person. Yeah. Like, you know, I have like when the cleaners are coming, like, yeah. yes, that's going to disrupt the house. Everything, like, right? Everything. That always does. Yeah. We can also see it where, you know, we can arrange like our meetings and our phone calls where it's like, okay, this was already planned. Yeah. I am not moving this. <laughs> right, right. Like, and it's important, you know, like if you have right. a night call or something too, like, Definitely. I really like that idea. The communication on a calendar is a good idea. Yeah. And I mean, we do the same thing at the daycare for like behavior assessments. It's like part of our onboarding process. And so like every manager, whether they're at the assessment or not, is getting CC'd and put on this calendar for the assessment so that everyone knows we have a new member yeah. being interviewed to come in today then everyone sees like they become a member and it's like okay like now we know there's a new dog coming in like right. next week right and to be like aware of that that's such a good point oh my gosh I think that that's the perfect way to end our episode thank you so Yay. much for coming on this was You're so fun welcome. thank you oh my gosh this was the best and if you guys need to get in touch with Nicole you absolutely should either way go check her out on Instagram DM her with questions she's always open to chit chatting and sharing more information about the membership program all of her information's in our show notes below I also wanted to let you guys know because we have not talked about this in a while we are still offering our giveaway for the reviews for the end of mind podcast so if you guys love this episode make sure that you go to apple Podcasts, leave us a review mention nicole give us Aww. everything that you love we want to know it all and you will be entered into a giveaway to win a 25 dollars gift card to your local mom and pop shop we want to help support your local community you have the best audience you have the best listeners so Thank I feel you. like who doesn't love a giveaway right it's so fun and sometimes it's really hard to get these reviews so I'll just be honest with you guys so that's why I like to give you some sort of incentive because I get like dms all the time which I appreciate your dms so much because it like Aww. builds confidence and makes me feel so good about the show and the reviews help us reach more listeners so if you guys love this show it definitely does me a huge solid yeah it's like a professional testimonial like oh thank Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. I just had the best time and I will see you guys next time. Make sure you connect with Nicole. Give her a shout out. Let her know what you thought. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. We'll have Nicole back on soon. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to The End in Mind. I would like to remind you all, if you haven't yet reached out to me on Instagram, we are at Meraki underscore media underscore management. It will be in our show notes as well. If you would like to reach out to me, we always offer free coaching through Instagram based around our Instagram training and our business Instagram practices. If you need any type of support, please do not hesitate to reach out to me there. And we also offer Def several different types of consulting and training packages if you're looking for a little bit more in-depth tips. So thank you all for listening in. And of course, I want you all to keep the end in mind as you continue with your day and or work week. Have a great week and I will see you all next time.